I would not have thought it possible for a person of my background to become president of Brown University. The youngest of 12 children, Ruth was born into extreme poverty in 1940s Grapeland, Texas. Nevertheless, she rose to become the leader of one of our finest educational institutions. You know, every day I go to work and I face the, the painting of the first president of Brown, mm -hmm. a slaveholder. Mm -hmm. And I think the power in the fact that I face the slaveholder as a descendant of slaves is just as it ought to be because in that march of history, all these things happen. Ruth grew up just a step removed from slavery in a family of sharecroppers. This was the notorious system under which farmers picked cotton and lived on someone else's land in return for a share of the profits. But they had to pay such high charges for food, clothing, and rent, that they often fell into a cycle of debt from which they could never escape. Almost every aspect of Ruth's childhood revolved around the cotton plantation where her family worked and lived. And there were hundreds of families living on it. It was that vast. Village within the village. A village within a village. And it was, it was a really hard scrabble life. And when I think about it now, do you know what my sisters and brothers and I took for lunch when mm. we went to school? What? A bucket with syrup, a biscuit, and bacon grease in it every day. Most of my older siblings who were in Grapeland didn't finish school mm -hmm. because they had to work in the cotton fields. What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, my goodness. I could not have had any aspiration other than to follow in the footsteps of my, uh, of mm -hmm. my parents. But in the early 1950s, new possibilities opened up for Ruth when her family joined the mass migration of African Americans who were moving from farm towns to industrial cities looking for work. For Ruth's family, that meant Houston's all-black Fifth Ward. And it was here that her lifelong passion for education took root. That move to Houston changed my life because the city required us to go to school every day. Um, and um, that, that sort of saved things for me. Ruth and her brothers, Clarence and Wilfred Stubblefield, wanted to take us back to Grapeland to show us the farm where their family had once worked as sharecroppers. Okay. This is Ruth's first trip back since her childhood. It was hard labor for adults. And naturally, it was incredible labor for children to do. And yet, um, as soon as you were able, you were taken to the field and you were expected to be a contributor uh, to, uh, to the labor. We would get up around 5, 5.30, and we would either chop cotton or pick cotton for the duration of the day, and then we would come back home. You had to have as many hands uh, on deck as possible because you had to bring in as much of the crop as you could in order to make a subsistence living. This farm was a self-contained colored world where Ruth's family almost never encountered white people. But on the rare occasion when they did go into Grapeland, they were forced strictly to follow the code of the Jim Crow South. From my earliest days, I was aware that there were certain ways of behaving um, that were essential to surviving in that environment. Uh, don't ever talk back to a white person, mm -hmm. okay? If you're on the sidewalk and you meet a white person, step off the sidewalk and let them pass. Um, so we had a long list of things that we dared not do for fear 
of what might happen to us because violence against blacks in those days was commonplace. Mm -hmm. So we were in this vice.